Hey guys, Kerry Reed here, Real Adventures Sport Fishing. Um, first nice day in a while. It's warmed up, it's January. Uh, we're gonna head out, take advantage of this nice day, gas up the boat, and uh, maybe I'll show you a few tricks or techniques um, today on planer boards. And I uh, hope you enjoy. be here out in the middle of the lake and I'll show you how this works. I'll get a planer board set up right away and I can show you how everything works. This right here, planer board. And the idea of the planer board is it's uh, well threefold. One thing it does is it will spread your lines out. So if you have more than two or three lines going out behind the boat you can run these planer boards out to the side and they will spread the lines out so you don't have any tangles. Um, number two is the second thing they're good for is getting the lines away from the boat. Now on our lake here, Kootenai Lake, um, the fish are boat shy. These rainbows are boat shy. So when you happen to go over top of a bunch of fish with your boat, they're going to scatter out to the sides. And uh, the idea of the planter board, it's going to have your line out to the side where these fish scatter to. So that's the second, second good reason for a planter board. And the third purpose of a planter board is it's going to impart action onto your lure. So if you're using a bucktail fly, for instance, you'll see how this planer board surges forward, falls back, surges forward, while well, it's putting that action on your lure. So your lure is doing that, giving it more lifelike action. Pretty simple device, but very effective. For today's presentation, uh, I'm going to run a bucktail fly, and uh, very simple fly. That's one of my favorite patterns right there, but uh, that's a whole nother, whole nother story, a whole nother video teaching you how to run these flies. So today we'll just concentrate on the planter boards, I'll show you how they work. And so you're going to let your line out, your lure is going to be out behind the boat, a normal distance, and uh, every boat has a different sweet spot behind the boat. Uh, depends on what kind of electrolysis your boat's giving off. It's, that'll dictate how far back your lines need to be. Like I said, these fish are boat shy. So I've come up with a number that works good for me. I catch more fish at, at a certain distance behind the boat. And for me, especially with bucktail flies, um, my number's 200 feet behind the boat. <clears throat> that might vary. That's going to vary with every different boat. but. I've been around long enough, experimented long enough, that 200 catches me, the uh, majority of my fish, and it's still close enough to the boat that you're, uh, <laughs> you're not chasing them forever. Um, some of the bigger fish I noticed that are a little more educated maybe, uh, we've caught with as much as 300 feet of lime, but most of the fish we're catching now, uh, say the two to five pound range, um, they have no problem biting. 200 feet back so I'm gonna go 200 nice thing about I use line counter reels that's a nice thing about a line counter is I can hand a rod to my clients guests or my friends and uh, we all know what what distance we're fishing behind the boat so line counter reel really helps for that and so what I'm gonna do here Now I've got my line. Now I've got my line out 200 feet behind the boat, 202. Um, I'm going to connect it to the planer board out there with this Scotty planer board release clip. 
it's like a little clothes peg it'll just uh, clamp onto your onto your line and I'll show you how that works and we'll go so I've got the Scotty planer board release and this is gonna clip over your planer board line right like this and now I'm gonna clip my line fishing line into this slot and I go about halfway into here I go back about to the middle where this dot is on here and that's uh, the tension is tight enough that you're not gonna have any false releases in rough water and it's loose enough that uh, even a small fish will probably pull it out of that clip and so here's my line if you can see it I'll clip it halfway in and I'm gonna let it go now and so now how do you how do you get your line out to the planer board well it's just a matter of free dragging free spooling and now I'm gonna let my line out until it's where I want it to be on that planer board line now you can run multiple lines off of one planer board you know if I had four or five people on the boat we were gonna run four or five lines I would stagger my lines on the planer board so the first line I would run out within about three feet of the board and I'd lock it in the holder then and then maybe the next line would you know be about 20 feet apart so you'd have 20 foot separation maybe 30 foot separation between your lines now that's where I want it right there you see how that clip is is tight um, when a fish strikes that clip's gonna pull back up like a bow and arrow it'll pull back about 10 feet um, before it releases a smaller fish that may not release the clip it'll still be pretty obvious because that clip's gonna pull right back and it'll pull the orange line back with it it'll stay back there until it releases and so you can see the action that 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 planer board is putting on to that fly um, that's just one of the benefits running a planer board so that one's ready to go I'll put it in the holder here Okay. Then wait for a strike. Now I'm by myself today, so uh, BC laws on fresh water is uh, you can only run you can run two rods if you're by yourself. So I'm going to put another line out the other side, and uh, we'll have two planter boards going on the surface, and then we'll sit back. Another bucktail wait. fly out the other side. Uh, here's another pattern that more of a winter pattern as so the water reaches at 42 degree um, for some reason the fish key in on this red lateral and so this one I use I use uh, late winter and uh, we'll see how it works and I'll get into that stuff on another video I'll tell you about different patterns when they work and, and all that kind of stuff my favorites but this is what we'll use for today, and I'll get it out there and show you how it works. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I'm a Scotty fan, so here's another another Scotty product. This is more of a, this is a downrigger uh, terminal tackle, but um, it works great for clipping your planer board onto. Okay, I've got her clipped up here. I'm gonna let it out, I don't know, about 100 feet. There's another advantage while well, spreading the lines out was the advantage I was telling you. So now instead of covering, you know, with your lines straight behind the boat, you'd be covering about a, I don't know, 12 foot wide path of water. Well now with two planer boards out, I'm gonna cover about 200 feet of water. So kind of helps increase your odds. Okay, we're set up. I don't know if you get a big and wide enough angle to see the both the planer boards out here to the side, but basically our lines are now out to each side about, I don't know, 75 feet 
each way. So we're covering 150 feet wide of water, which will help with our, our uh, efficiency. Now people have asked me, do I need to use planter boards? Do you have to have planter boards to catch fish on the big lakes? Well, no, you don't. In fact, um, what I usually do is I start with one line on the planter board, one line straight behind the boat, and um, it's different every day, but these fish will tell you what they want. And some days they want that planter board one because it's got more action and the fish are more aggressive. Other days the fish are lazy and they want that fly or plug or uh, apex, whatever you want to use, um, dead in the water. So a lot of times you'll get them straight behind the boat with no action, but um, you just have to experiment every day, find out what the fish want that day, and then that's what you hey, stick with. Here's a bird's eye view of going down the lake, the planer boards, covering some water. And you can see how effective or how efficient it is. You can cover a lot more water this way. Ideally, I'd like to see a strike, but maybe today's not the day, and with the limited time I have right now, I just wanted to show you the function of the planer boards. Includes our planer board 101 seminar. Hope you learned a few things. And uh, next time, just add fish. Stay tuned for our next series of videos where I'll show you how to run and tune a bucktail fly. There's definitely a proper technique to that. Uh, we'll teach you a few tricks with the downriggers and just show you how we fish every day out here. Thanks for watching. Light lines.